I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deep and stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the water lifted me, and I say, am I? Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. Uh, it's good to see all of you, and uh, if we have anyone visiting with us, of course, it's always a pleasure to, that you will give a time, uh, make way for, for God. And so it's good to see you, and if you're visiting with us, we want you to know that the doors of this building roll back on welcome hinges, and you are our honored guests. And we're going to say hello to those that are at home that are, are, are live streaming. It's always good to, to listen to the Word of God and be able to spread the Word of God, because we have... If it was not for the word of God, we would have no other purpose, the Church of Christ. If it's not for the gospel of Jesus Christ, what will we be doing now? So, so we should think about those, those things. So it's good to see everyone, as always. You know, someone uh, in America or around the world said they commit a violent crime in America every uh, 26 seconds uh, in, the, in America, and a murder uh, every... 36 minutes. And I guess sometimes we ask ourselves, well, what's going on? I, I mean, what is the world coming to? You know, last week we were, we were talking about this present, this present world, this present time. But, uh, uh, you know, it's just, just the idea of, you know, you look at the news and you read the newspaper and you look at your, your, your smart devices and all these images of, of violence are popping up everywhere. So this evening, we're exploring the cause of violence and the solution. We've been talking about asking the question, who is the Lord? You know, who is the Lord all summer? And, you know, he is Jesus, and, and, and he is the light of the world, and, and so forth and so on. So we've been asking a lot uh, about, the, uh, about Jesus Christ. Psalm 1 and verse 2 tells us about the blessed man. God said his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he does meditate both day and night. If you want a better world, it begins with you. Don't wait on others to do it if we want a better world. Today, seeking and looking for uh, Jesus Christ, we must meditate on his word, and, and, and it, it makes a difference uh, in our lives. We should learn what God desires from, from us, and we should try to practice it. Don't wait for others to do it. We should be doers of the word of God. The Lord Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I know the Lord, that the Lord and he wants us to serve and to do his will. So this evening we're talking about, we're looking at the issue is sin and violence and, and murder and crime. And the list goes on and on. But the, the answer is, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the answer. Lately, we, we, we see a lot of violence, a lot of evil, a lot of hearing about evil. Sometimes that we don't even want to turn on the news. We don't want to listen to it because it seems like all of it is about something that's going wrong in the, in the world. The nightly news carries stories and stories of assault and rape and murder. Violent crime in America has grown dramatically in the last 50 years. According to the FBI, there were 288,000 violent crimes in 1960. But in 2018, there were over 1.2 million violent crimes reported. We grieve over violence in the school. We grieve over shootings in the school. We have terroristic acts and bombings. We wonder how anyone could be so cruel and hard-hearted to one another. While some psychologists spoke of violent people being mentally disturbed, others said that they are just evil. And we look at Cain and we say, well, was Cain evil or was Cain just mentally disturbed? But we know what his problem was. He had an anger problem that he could not control. Perhaps it takes crime so, so horrific 
as this for us to remember that there is a such thing as evil. Postmodern America has spent so much time excusing itself and justifying the sin, it's forgotten how wicked and how evil human beings can be. More than anything, we need the teaching and the love of Jesus to change our hearts and to live righteously. Look at what, uh, uh, let's read, if you would, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 through 5. Paul here is writing to this young preacher, this young teacher, uh, Timothy, about things that he should be aware of, things that he should be concerned about. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 through 5. It says, this know also that in the latter, last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous and boasters and proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those things that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, Paul tell Timothy, turn away. He said in those days as he wrote to him and encouraged him. And then in 1 Timothy chapter 4, he said again, in verses uh, 4 through 1, it says, now the Spirit speak expressly. Sometimes we have a problem that 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 we wonder why evil is going on and we see it on the news and we see it around the community and in the neighborhood and in the schools and so forth and so on, but we forget what the Bible says. The Bible tells us about these things. So if we want to avoid the evil, we should, what? we should draw near to God that he might draw near to us. But he said, now the spirits speak explicitly that in the latter times, that is the days in which we are living in right now, this scripture would be, wouldn't have done anyone any good if it was only talking about in the days when Paul was writing to Timothy or we're just talking about in the days uh, a thousand years ago. Paul is writing to Timothy and writing to us. He said, the spirit speaketh, said what? Some shall depart from the faith. Who? Some. Who should depart from the faith? Brothers, sisters, preachers, elders, deacons, they will depart from the faith. Oh, how? Given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hard iron, forbidding to marry, it says, commanding to abstain from meat, which the God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And then Jude, look at what it says. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there, there should be markers in, when? The last time, who would walk after their own ungodly lusts. I mean, it's written over and over and over again in the scripture. And then John says in 1 John 2, 18, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that, that, that it is the last time. When is it? It is right now at present. And then look what Peter says. Paul writes to Timothy. Jude says it. Uh, uh, John is writing about it. And now it, it is what, what Peter said. Five different people are saying, know this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of the come? Everyone questioning God. Almost every writer in the Bible is telling us. And we look at the news and we say, oh, oh, things so look like they're getting bad. Oh, that's really horrible. But men have been horrible since the day of Noah when he said that what every imagination was evil continually. They have been, we have been evil continuously. Remember Genesis chapter 4 and verse 6? And the Lord said unto Cain, why art you mad? Why are you angry? What are you upset about? And why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, Shall you not be accepted? And if you do it not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be the desires of thy, 
thou shalt that desires and thou shalt rule over him. Cain, you got a sin, you got an anger problem. You need to manage your anger. It will consume you. It will get you in trouble. But Cain did not listen. But Cain let his anger grow in spite of God's warning. And then verse 8, it said, Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against him, his brother, and Abel, and killed Abel, his brother. What Cain did was evil. That was almost 6,000 years ago. He planned to kill Abel out of his own jealousy and all of his own rage. And we would see that on the news and say, oh, the older brother killed the younger brother when the parents were not home. That's evil. And it is. It is. But what is the answer? We need to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to teach as many people as possible what? That, that solves and cures the problem of sin. If we don't do it, no one else will. If we don't preach the gospel, no one else will. God said in Genesis 9 and verse 6, he said that whosoever sheds man blood or shed the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his own image. There are consequences. There should be consequences, but sometimes we look overlook them. God has always considered taking the life of another as evil. The, the, remember the Ten Commandments in, in Exodus 20 and verse 13? Thou shalt not kill. That is very clear. That is a direct statement. It cannot be, be misunderstood. It cannot be interpreted. What thou shalt not kill. Murder is and has always been wrong. Revelation 21 and verse 8 said, but, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. God has a place for them. You know, uh, 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 Lazarus was comforted and the rich man was in torment. Because what? He had enjoyed his time on the earth. The New Testament warns us. It tells us not to follow after Cain. First John chapter 3 and verse 12 says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, the devil, Satan, and he slew his brother. And sometimes we want to get him evaluated. We want to take him to the psychiatrist. And we're saying that, well, maybe he was bullied in school and maybe he was that. Some people are evil. My folk and your folk. And sometimes it's hard to make a decision. Well, we, we, well, you know, it's different when it's not your folk. Don't change anything. And wherefore slew he his brothers? Because his own works were evil. That's how people murder folks. That's how folks kill folks. And his brother, righteous. Cain first thought evil and then put his deadly plan into action. He thought about it in the place where God should exist, in the mind, in the thought process of what, what? Well, he should have been thinking on certain things. He was thinking about killing his brother. And maybe sometime when we are thinking on bad things and evil things and speaking about it, sometimes maybe we just need to open up the word of God Psalm is always, Psalms is always a common book to read. So what, to get that evil out of us, to cleanse the palate of evil that sneaks up on each one of us. When we get out of control, we get angry, we want to fuss, we want to fight and stuff, and sometimes we need to say, take a step back. We too must master our thoughts and not allow evil to overcome us. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 5 and verse 21, he says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old times, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill his brother is in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rachel, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. That the stages where you have the opportunity to, to curb your anger and stop it, it goes a little further. God says, it, it goes a little further. And then what? You end up in hell. Because we will not control our anger, our issues. How do we co control it? Jesus Christ, he is the answer to those things that, that bother us. 
The Lord condemns the evil in the heart. Even if we don't act upon it, anger, hate, vengeance is as evil as murder itself. We should not even entertain the idea of harming or slaying another person. How do you entertain that thought, I'm going to get my weapon, I'm going to go all the way from Phoenix City to Columbus, I'm going to find them, and I'm going to slay them. How do we stop that? We must preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must try to get it into every home, try to get it into every school, get it back into the court system, try to get where, where, where no one wants to have anything to do with God and his son, Jesus Christ. No one. Hollywood definitely don't. You can't say in the name of Jesus. He says you can, and they say you can't. Don't say that name. The Lord Jesus said in Mark 7 and verse 21, he says that for, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceeded evil thoughts. I thought about the woman, the adultery. I thought about the fornication. I thought about the murder, the theft, the covetousness, the wickedness, the deceit, the lasciviousness, and the evil eye, the blasphemy, the proud. Can you list? Have you seen what a list of sins look like? They go on and on. The foolishness, all these evil things come from within a man. They don't grow in your garden. Nobody goes, you can't buy them at Walmart. They come from in here. Not in here, but in here. We think about those things. How do we fix our thinking? How do we stop these things from getting into our mind? Maybe we should turn some things off and turn some things on. Spend some time reading this book and study. Why would God write all of this for me to just disregard it? Every single day, I gotta, I'm too busy. You know what's interesting? You can be too busy, but don't worry. You won't be too busy too much longer. You keep being too busy. God got a fix for busy. He got something that reminds us about how busy we are. It's called a cemetery. Say, so won't, won't nothing matter. Like I said this morning, you know, I got much, just much money as Steve Jobs. Matter of fact, I got more money than Steve Jobs because Steve Jobs don't have none. He left all of his here. Yes, we need to do something about this evil. And don't get, we get confused and we get complacent and we get uneasy and everything. We're seeing all this evil and all we need to do, the church has need to keep preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Keep teaching the gospel teaching the children, don't, don't do that, that's not wrong. That, 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 look, do what is right. Because our inner thoughts affect how we behave. We must be careful to keep our hearts free from the evil. We have to decide that we are going to live above ugliness and malice. According to Jesus, murder begins when people lose respect for another person. Do you know how precious it is a person is, how precious life is. I mean, I got a problem catching squashing bugs. Have you ever seen what dead look like? Have you ever seen a man laying on a slab dead? There's nothing pretty about dead. We should not take life lightly, but we can love people back to life. Because the world's running around in dead, they're running around dead. We have decided that we are going to live above this ugliness we should. Spitting in the face of another, looking with contempt upon another, or releasing one anger are signs of a murderous spirit. When you start doing evil things to people, and when you start bullying other people, it's just, it's just a stepping stone to doing something else. Not respecting young women, it's just a stepping stone to doing something else. It just don't pop up overnight. We grow into it. We learn it. We see it on TV. We, we hear it in the songs. We, we hear it rap to us. Every facet of how dead the devil want to get into here, he is utilizing it. But we only have one method to get into here. The devil has thousands. We just have one, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we refuse to do that. We don't want to have be bothered with the gospel on Monday morning. No, I went to church yesterday. I'm good. Jesus forced us to consider our thoughts 
and our words that we don't allow our anger and hatred to overwhelm us. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31, let all bitterness, all wrath, and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another. You're not going to kill anybody with that. You're not going to kill anybody being tender hearted. You're not going to destroy anybody forgiving one another. Even as God, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Father, forgive me of my sins and teach me how to forgive others. We must learn to let go of evil thoughts. Let it go and be kind to one another, even if they are not kind to us. We have to fight the urge to, to lash out, to fight back. Even when people say ugly things to us, I say, okay. Why? Because of Jesus. Why? Because he hung on the cross. Why? But he did not lash out. He did not lash out even when they was nailing him to the Father. For, forgive them. Forgive them because what? They don't know what they're doing. People do not know what they're doing. They are risking their souls and the only one to tell them is the church. We have the answer to the problem. But the question is, will we give the world the answer? Isn't it good when you we're taking a test and stuff? Oh, oh man, I can't, I can't figure that out. And sometimes a teacher will walk by sometime and say, you, you know, you might want to consider that one right there. Teachers do that sometimes. They notice they know they're struggling. They say, that's a good student. We don't want them to go on to the next grade. And sometimes they go by as, you know, uh, you sure you want that one? You don't want the next one? That's, that, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. So we have to be careful. Evil in the heart leads to the most terrible sins. Even religious people, even religious people, if they allow jealousy or hatred to build up in their hearts, they can do unspeakable cruelty, cruel things to one another. You're tearing up churches, fighting like you out there in the world. Jealousy and hatred and malice, and I don't like this person, and I don't like... Look, we all in this game together. Ain't none of us righteous. The only thing that's righteous is Jesus Christ. The only thing that makes you righteous is being in Christ Jesus. If you think you're so good, no, you're not. We need to fight off the impulse to do wrong. The chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees were behind the death of Jesus. They chose Barabbas. They chose Barabbas, the criminal, the murderer, to be spared while they cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Don't tell me people can't do evil. We need to ward off this evil by doing right, teaching right, loving right, just turning our backs, walking away, giving way to evil. Say, no, I'm not, I'm I'm not going to do that. They didn't fool Pilate. However, Mark 15 and verse 10 says, for he, that is Ponte Pilate, perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. Why were they envious? First, because Jesus could perform miracles and they could not. They saw the miracles. They saw there was the wonders and the signs. They saw all of it, but they did not want to accept it. They were jealous. They were spiteful. Who was he? Healing people now. I don't recall Jesus healing an animal or calling a, a puppy or a cat. Jesus Christ was healing people. I see people every day. I was like, oh, if I could just lay my hands on them. We see them every day. Lame and crippled. They were just envious and spiteful. First, because Jesus could perform these miracles, but they couldn't. After Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, some men ran and told the priests, and this is John chapter 11 and verse 4, said, did you see what he did? He brought, he brought somebody back from the dead. He brought somebody from the grave. He made Martha and Mary happy and all of their friends. And all of them, remember before he did that, they were, they were weeping. Jesus wept with them. Did you see what he did? (laughs) Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we for this man do it many miracles? They should have been celebrating. They should have been happy. He was doing miracles for their relatives and people too. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and our nation. They weren't concerned about Jesus. 
They didn't care anything about his miracles. They were concerned about their, their welfare and their money and their status. And then the second reason came from their fear of losing their livelihood at the temple. They figured it was better for Jesus to die than for them to lose their nation. Kill him. I think Jesus would have made a stronger nation for all of them. He had the power, didn't he? He could, he could calm the seas. He could walk on the water. He could, well, he could heal the blind and the deaf and everything. And Jesus would have created a more powerful nation than ever that the Roman Empire had. But they didn't want him. Many people today do horrible things out of jealousy and envy. Another cause of hatred is some, th some things you might not expect is, is the truth. People don't want the truth told if it exposes their sin. Don't bring the light, as I think it says in John chapter 1. They don't want the light. Why? Because it exposes who they are. John 3 and verse 19 says that, and this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love, they love darkness rather than light. They don't want to be seen. When the police told me the other week, she said, yes, it said that the criminals that they used to, you know, they would just, uh, you know, come out at night. But these rascals, they, they coming out in the daytime. Now she can't even get a good night's sleep. You know, when she's in the bed, she's getting called. When, they, when, when people should be sleeping, they, they are out in the street. But they, people like darkness. They, when, the dark, when the sun goes down, the, the, the crime goes up. Because of what? Their deeds are evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth light. Neither cometh to the light, lest their, his deeds should be reproved. Sinful people want the darkness to cover up their sinful ways. They hate for their sins to be exposed and hate anyone who exposes their sins. You remember Herod and John, John the Baptist when he arrested him and put him in prison because Herod, the wife, he told him, said, what, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Was John right? Yes, he was right. It's not right for you to have your niece flaunting herself in front of you. So what did he do? He saved John, but that woman went into a rage. So he told us, for, for, it is not lawful. And then Matthew 14 and verse 4 said, For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. Herod was grieved about the matter, but Herod's Herodias plotted to have John beheaded. Herod, was, he was grieved, but he, didn't, he said what? No, he knew who John was. And the evil people, person who has hatred in his heart or her heart has no compassion, they will take vengeance into their own hand. Whenever they get a chance, if I see them, wherever I see them, I'm going to get them. Remember, we used to say that, I'm going to get you after school. Nothing could, look, you couldn't tell them anything. You get that look in your eye and that hair raised up in the back of your head and say, look, oh, it's on now. It's hard to contain a person when they get, when they get out of control. When, they, when, they, when, when the anger has taken control, it is hard. They will fight you. They will fight anyone around you. Selfish desires can lead people to commit murder. People who are greedy, greedy for power and gold will do anything to eliminate their competition. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 21, it says, Now when Jer Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself and slew all of his brothers with the sword and diver diverse also of the prince of Israel. His father Lay, gave all of his brothers cities and golds and gifts, but he gave him the kingdom. And what was his answer? He slew all of his brothers. You, 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 you are the king. But what? It is jealous rage. For some reason, I, he didn't like his brothers. His brothers didn't have half as much. He had the whole kingdom. And his answer is, I'm going to kill them all. I'm going to get rid of them. Lust for power causes people to do horrible things even to their own families. James 3.16 says, For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. 
Why is it so much evil in the world? Because these things that John and Peter and Paul wrote to Timothy and Timothy preached and Jews spoke of, these things are for our generation. And they were for the generation before that and the generation for that. And when we are gone, it's going to be for the generation after us. Unrestrained sexual desires leads to evil. When David lustfully committed adultery with Bathsheba and he got her pregnant, it led to many sins. He tried to cover it up by getting Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, drunk and tried to get him to send him home to his wife. We should be wary of alcohol. Why you got to get him drunk? Why Lot's got to be drunk to do the evil? Why? Because what? Alcohol does something to you. Do what? It does something to the mind. When nothing else worked, David arranged to have Uriah killed and battered. Nathan the prophet told David in, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, he says, Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? When we do evil, we are despising God and his commandments and his son, Jesus Christ. And the, we are grieving the Holy Spirit when we do that. To do evil in his sight. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. The evil, well, wait a minute, that wasn't a day, that was back in David's time. But we said, well, they're evil today. People do the same thing these days. They went on a vacation and they, they said they had a plan. They threw him overboard. Come back and say, I don't know what happened to my husband. Or, I don't know what happened to my wife. Kill off the kids, kill off the wife, kill off the husband. People kill anybody. And we were talking about, you know, I love my family. You better not love your family above Jesus Christ. You think your family love you? Put, put $100,000 between you and your family and see what happens. I think my brothers and sisters love me. But put some of them Benjamins in between us and I think a problem will arise. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sins will find you out. Numbers chapter 32 and verse 23. Note, I thought this was interesting. Sin will, without doubt, find out the sinner sooner or later. It concerns us, therefore, to find our sins out that we may repent of them and forsake them, lest our sins find us out to our ruin. You got to be better busy looking at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, do I have any sin on me? Because sin is looking to find you, to hang you out to dry. To tell you, say, oh, did you? Yeah, he did it. Did you say it? You, you call him a, a Christian? That's your brother in Christ? Look at what he did. Sin is on a hunt. Remember, when we sin against others, we are also sinning against God himself. If you love God, you, you will not allow selfishness to dominate your life. Don't let sin fight you. Don't let, don't let sin right, win, fight against sin. How do we fight against it? Through the word of God, through prayer, through meditation, through what? Practicing love, doing love, helping others, doing good. It's, it, it, what? it all works together. So we as Christians, and we could go on and talk about the works of the flesh. We've heard those things in, in the word of God. And they say, oh man, oh no man anything but to love one another. Isn't that why Jesus Christ came? He said, what well, greater love has no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for a friend. And he said, Jesus Christ said, you are my friends. You are my friends. You think Jesus Christ said, tell the world, oh no, you might know. No, the church of Christ, the one that he established, it, 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 we are his friends if we keep his commandments and do his will. Jesus Christ came for a purpose. He came to save us from ourselves. We will destroy ourselves. And that's why you have the gospel that, to, that we, what Peter, when he preached it on the day of Pentecost, and they go throughout the, 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 the book of Acts preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, 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 and we can see the process taking place there. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. They came to a conclusion, well, we have murdered Jesus. It was our fault. Men, what, what can we do? And he said, well, repent and be baptized, every one of you. 
Jesus has a desire for all of us to come to the knowledge of the truth and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. He don't want anyone to perish, not one single soul. That's why Jesus Christ came. He came here to what? We, we can tell people about his gospel. We can tell people what, how, what, what, the, what cruelty happened to him. And we can tell us so what he has defeated death because he rose again the third day. You, you have to believe that because if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is who he said, we're going to die in our sins. And where, we, where he is, we're not going to be able to go. Repent. And we look at the evil that's going on and the evil that we read about, the evil that we probably look at on the news this uh, afternoon and, 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 and uh, th uh, this evening and, and things like that. And we ask ourselves, so, oh, that's really horrible. But Jesus said what? Except you repent. You are all likewise perish. And we must confess him. We must confess him as Matthew chapter 10 says. It said, we confess him, he will confess us before his father. And then we must be baptized, obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we're baptized, Jesus Christ will add us to his church. He washes away our sins. He will, we become new creatures, new people that we are able to grow and develop and be Christian folk. And then our last, our last but not least, we must live faithful until death. Baptism starts the new life. It doesn't end it. So when we obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, we must be willing to, what, live the new life. If we have any that desires to obey the gospel, if we have any here that desire to make a confession, we'll give you the opportunity to do so as we stand and sing the selected hymn. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily lives. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed. Savior, I surrender. 